So hello and welcome to another video, this time a basic profession guide for the thief or daredevil profession. And sorry, this one's been a long time coming guys, I've been really struggling to find a time where I can speak without sneezing and sniffing like every five seconds. I do apologise, you can probably hear it in my voice. But uh, let's crack on with the vid. So what are we going to be talking about today? We're going to be talking about the skills, the... Uh, specializations, you know, basically how you play the Daredevil uh, staff thief. I'm going to focus on the staff. Um, there are a number of builds out there at the moment, but this is an easy one and it's a good one to to get your, your feet wet if you're starting out as a thief in the game. And it's relatively high damage, so, uh, you know, it has that going for it. So let's talk pros and cons, actually. So what are the pros and cons of the profession? Well, it's a really simple profession to pick up. You know, you pick up the staff, you hit things, it's all good. It's very easy to play, very easy to equip. So it's uh, a decent starting profession if you're getting into raiding and stuff like that. Uh, secondly, on the pro list, it's actually quite high damage. And that's important. Like a high damage build for a damage profession, very important. Uh, thirdly... Um, uh, you can stealth. Just kidding. Ah, you thought you could stealth. You thought you could be like the predator. You can't be. Sorry. No predator for you. You just have to make do with hitting things with a staff. Like a badass monk. So what are the cons of the profession? Well, it's not the highest damage build possible. And given that you're on a DPS class, you always want to aim for that. If you're doing DPS in like a raid or any other situation. So that's that's a downside, definitely. Also, the thief has no team utility, or rather this brand of Daredevil has no team utility. So, um, you know, a little bit of CC and that's it. Um, so, moving on. So what do we have for the skills? Well, we're basically packing stats into the skills. Uh, so we have the Assassin Signet, grants increased power, and the active is deal 50% more damage on your next 5 attacks. And you can potentially use this right at the end of a fight for the last 5 attacks to deal 15% more, but most of the time you just want to keep it up for that 180 um, extra power. And then we've basically got the exact same thing here, grants increased precision, and refills endurance and cleanse conditions. So. Uh, a condition cleanser can be useful, but most of the time, again, you'll just be wanting to leave this up. Um, as much as possible. Signet of Agility. Um, and so what do we have here? We have fliss, uh, Fist Flurry, which leads into Palm Strike. So this is a flurry of skill of like punches that your little thief does, well my little thief does, and that leads into an extra skill which does um, some CC, you see there's a two second stun and it's extra damage. So this is just a damage increase so you use this essentially just on cooldown, and this is what it looks like. Little, uh, little uh, six combo punches uh, there. And then, like, if you actually hitting something, you get access to Palm Strike as well, which you can then use. And then for the Elite, um, you can change this Elite up. I'm currently using Impact Strike. That's so I can get uh, a two-second daze and a launch on the uppercut. So the first two, the first two chains of this Elite skill are very good for CC bars. Um, you can change this for whatever situation you're in. If you're dealing with a lot of um, projectiles, then you might want to run Dagger Storm, spin around reflecting projectiles, and throwing daggers that cripple and bleed nearby foes. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, you can move while spinning, so uh, you just sort of spin around and just run around hitting as much as possible. But more importantly, it reflects projectiles, so that's the use of this. And Basilisk Venom is something you might want to use as well. This is used a lot in PvP. Um, your attacks are unblockable and turn foes to stone. So um, that that gives you a lot of CC as well. Um, I think in general you actually get more from Impact Strike than you do from Basilisk Venom. Um, unless you're using Venom Share, which we're not in this particular build. So I'm just going to leave it on Impact Strike for now. So let's move on to the equipment. Well, we're... In luck here, the equipment is really simple to go through. It's one of those power professions. It uses Zerk. So what do we have? Zerk with the Rune of the Scholar. If you've watched any of the other uh, power profession uh, builds that I've put out, then you'll know that 
basically every power build runs this setup. Berserker with uh, Rune of the Scholar um, and just all the way trinkets, just Berserk, Rune of the Scholar and a superior sigil of force and a superior sigil of air and that's because your crit chance is actually reasonable you don't need to use a superior sigil of accuracy um, particularly when you start getting some team buffs as well and fury which comes basically with the build so let's move on to the specializations so what do we have for the specializations well we have uh, deadly arts we have critical strikes and we have daredevil so Let's start with Deadly Arts. Um, first of all, we have Mug. Deal damage and gain lifesteal when... Um, uh, gain life while stealing, sorry. Um, this attack cannot critically hit. Yeah, it used to be able to critically hit, and uh, you could get, like, 8k damage with this. Now it's just a meager damage, but it still adds to your combo because there's no cast time on steal, so you can use it pretty much at any point, and it will just add damage, and as you see there, it'll actually do some healing as well. Um, and this is kind of a throwaway line. You can basically pick whatever suits you. I mean, Deadly Trapper, we're not using any traps in this particular build, so that's not especially useful. Panic Strike, immobilizing a foe poisons them. I mean, there is an immobilize on your number three skill. You're not going to be generally using it much. I mean, this has, as you can see, it's got CC. So a little bit of poison adding to that, yeah. And gain extra power when you're revealed. Well, we're not using anything that gives stealth. However, there are a number of mobs in this game, including some bosses, which will give you a... When you steal, will give you an F2 ability, which does stealth. So, potentially, using reveal training there will get you more than using Panic Strike. Um, I think most of the builds actually suggest reveal training. Um... And Executioner, this is why we go into this line in general, deal extra damage when your target is below the health threshold. So uh, below 50% do 20% more damage. Any of the trait that's like that is golden for a power build. Uh, so let's move on to Critical Strikes. We have Flawless Strike, deal increased critical damage when your health is above the threshold. This is like critical damage version of Scholar. So yeah, that nice damage buff. Gain Frosty based on your precision. Again, more crit damage, more damage, all good. And no quarter. Landing a critical hit while under the effects of Fury. Increase the duration of Fury and gain increased uh, ferocity when under the effects of Fury. So this basically means if you ever get Fury, which you will, because that just happens in any party, you will permanently have Fury as long as you keep hitting things. And while you permanently have Fury, you'll have 250 Ferocity as well, which will up your crit damage significantly. I think something like 9%. I, I don't know the actual numbers, but nice little damage trait there. So moving on to Daredevil. So this is the line that gives you access to the staff and also changes your dodge, which I'll go into in a little while. Um, Havoc Mastery. Deal increased damage uh, to enemies within the range threshold. Well, seeing as you're smacking things in melee, you're pretty much always going to have this increased damage. Uh, staff Master. While wielding a staff, gain endurance for each initiative point spent. Um, deal bonus damage when your endurance is not full while uh, wielding a staff. Well, you're going to be wanting to use your endurance occasionally. Like, if you have an excuse to dodge, you want to use your endurance so that you can proc this. Um, turns out that actively procking this is a little, little iffy, unless you can, like, store up you know, by store up, I mean use all your um, endurance before the battle even starts. Um, so, moving on to uh, Bounding Dodger. Your dodge ability is replaced with Bound, dealing damage to the area after you evade. And Bound, as you can see there, it can critically hit and um, replaces your dodge. So there's three dodges you can get on Daredevil. Uh, Lotus Training, which is like a little spin over the top and does some bleed damage. <coughs> Um, unhindered combat, which is like your sort of travel slash dodging ability if you have to like dodge a huge amount. And then bounding dodger, which is your sort of power damage uh, thing. And, it, and it, turns, it turns your dodge into this, essentially. And you can see when it lands, it does a little crater there and that actually does a fair amount of damage. So um, those are the specializations. It's all pretty straightforward. They're all just picked to maximize damage because that's what we're attempting to do here. Um, 
Um, and uh, so let's 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 move straight on. So I've come to the Kitty Cave to just give a basic overview of the of what you'll be doing in a standard fight. It's really simple. There's not going to be much to this at all. Um, I've put all the buffs on me, not the realistic ones that you know just for the hell of it, you know, just just for a bit of fun or whatever. Um, um, so the only thing uh, to be aware of is that somewhere. Yeah, um, let me see if I can find it. Of course, the minute I'm looking for it, I can't find it. Um, right. Deal bonus damage when your endurance is not full while wielding a staff. So, you be, you're going to be wanting to keep that 10% bonus damage active whenever possible, but not too much. It's a fine line... Um, keeping that balance because when you interrupt an auto attack chain that seriously lowers your damage so I would say what you want to do is you want to keep your endurance below 100% when you're using fist flurry which is a major source of damage um, and obviously the follow up uh, skill palm strike and of course you want to start by um, doing just that and it really is as simple as just making sure that when you dodge, you're not interrupting any auto attack chain. You land on the actual boss, so you might have to come slightly away from it um, to do that. And then, yeah, just press steel, press fist flurry when it's up. Try and keep your endurance up. And, you know, this is really, really simple gameplay to follow in a raid scenario. And you can see, you know, we're getting numbers of like 30 odd K, which is respectable for any, any damage profession. However, obviously, as I said, I'm not using, I'm not using the realistic buffs. I'm just using all the buffs, but it gives you an idea of the kind of damage and what you should be doing uh, in general when you are fighting. Sorry, distracted by technician, but yeah, when you are fighting an enemy, it's pretty simple. Auto attack, steal, fist flurry, try and keep your, your dodge up and dodge into the boss so that when you land, you proc that bound damage from the bound, you know, they, this is this is a it, this is a part. If you're going to keep dodging to keep um, the bonus up from this trait, staff master, then you need to make sure you land land the bound as well. Otherwise, your damage will go down. So for consumables, what do we have? Well, the power consumables for um, for Thief have changed recently, um, along with every other power build um, out there, as the Seaweed Salad that was plus 10% damage while moving was uh, nerfed considerably, and now the best food to use is a bowl of sweet and spicy butternut squash soup. Um, so that's plus 100 power and plus 70 ferocity. And just do bear in mind that that's a one hour consumable, so you might think, well, that's very expensive when you look to buy it, but it's obviously twice as much as uh, normal consumables that are only half an hour. Um, and also bear that in mind when you're when you're uh, repopping food um, that this one only has to be done every hour, and this one has to be done every 30 minutes. So 100 power and condition duration. Um, condition duration. There's just the odd little bit of bleed and a little bit of you know um, poison here and there. That does get increased with that. Any little power damage increase you can get on top of that 100 power uh, makes this the best utility for the Daredevil Thief. And that's about it for the Staff Daredevil. I mean, it might seem a bit simplistic, um, and it is. It's a simple profession. It doesn't make it necessarily less fun. It's um, it's a high damage build. It's uh, you know, it's going to be. It's going to be up there, and the simplicity means you know it's a more reliable damage build in a lot of circumstances as well. Um, you bring a fair amount of CC to the party as well. Um, the palm strike, which is activated by hitting every fist flurry strike, 
It is a two second stun and as I mentioned before the launch and the days here. So you have a lot of CC um, and it's just generally a fun profession and uh, I hope you all agree and uh, sorry it's taken so long for me to get this video out um, but uh, I guess all, all that's left to say is uh, thanks for watching and uh, tell a friend. Oh wait wait one more thing uh, just a quick mention this of course is the ninth and final video of the basic profession guides so how I'm gonna proceed from here is I'm gonna release a video which is going to be just outlining what has changed since um, everything since I made these videos because it's taken me a long time to make these basic guides um, it's going to be outlining everything that has changed with each profession um, not everything everything but you know the main points um, and then uh, I think what I'm going to do from that point onwards is I'm going to focus on builds that come out and are used by the community um, and make basic guides to those new builds that come out um, as a sort of extension of the of the playlist. Um, but that's you know that's a little bit in the future, and we've got the expansion coming soon as well. So um, who knows what will happen? And you know maybe I'll just have to delete the whole playlist. Who knows? But uh, anyway, now seriously, thanks for watching, and uh, thanks for watching this little extra bit, and you know this little bit me explaining. It's an extra bit. And I'm going now.